first of all uh, warm welcome to all of you uh, we really excited to uh, organize this webinar to talk about something that uh, for me is a big moment in the history of technology and ai and uh, today we are going to talk about how we are going to use generative ai like gpt and what problems we can solve and especially with respect to engati how are we using it for uh, solving problems for our customers i am your host anvis i run the ai and research division of engati uh, we have been doing ai especially nlp for last 5 years and i have seen the journey of nlp over the years and you seen that uh, with the offering that we have made at engati i'll quickly go over the agenda so i'll spend a couple of minutes on talking about what we do at engati and then uh, i'll go over to uh, generative ai and especially chat gpt which i think all of you know by now uh, is a breakthrough technology and we'll go through what chat gpt can do i'm sure all of you have heard about what all it can do but there are a lot of things that it can't do so we'll look at those use cases that are interesting for enterprises then i'll talk about specific instances of or use cases that we can use for enterprise problem solving and i'll also highlight some of the features that we have integrated and are offering it as part of the ngrt platform and then we'll leave the rest of the time for q and a so ngrt is a low code no code platform where users can come in and build applications based on ai and automation and kind of connect their customers to businesses so in short we are kind of the pipeline which can be used to acquire customers to engage with customers and obviously you want to retain them and service them so the entire customer journey uh, can be modeled and built with engati platform and the best part is that you can do it without no technical knowledge or very less technical knowledge so that has been one of the hallmarks of engati we build this platform for everybody just like chat gpt is for everyone we do not want only technical people to use the platform so we have lot of customers who have actually used the platform and have given us that feedback saying that if we hadn't thought about designed it to make it low code no code they would have never build an application to service their customers so think of an example like let's say there's a travel company and we have many such travel companies who have built chatbots to engage with their customers 24 by 7 365 days a year and in more than 50 languages right we have customers all across the world so let's take a travel company and uh, they want to uh, engage with the users who are coming in and asking about any travel packages or trips that they can make so they come in they built a chatbot on their own and they have been able to capture leads they have been able to answer questions using our ai technology and they have also been able to execute automation flows and all of this can be done very quickly and with or without assistance so in terms of customers who are currently using the engati platform we have lot of customers from various industry verticals 
customer support in general for any company is a very critical area and a lot of companies from various industries be it banking insurance e-commerce retail real estate they use engati for customer support and customer service in addition to that we've also had customers who have built bots outside of customer service so for example they want to automate a purchase journey like a e-commerce customer as all of you know you go to amazon or flipkart to buy and think of it this way if you want to experience the uh, experience uh, a virtual assistant who can guide you and help you into making a purchase so think of the experience that you would have when you go to a physical store so you walk into the physical store somebody immediately greets you talks to you does some chit chat tries to know you and then kind of finds out from you what are your interests what is it that you want to buy and they'll engage with you in a way that they connect to you emotionally and try to kind of understand your needs and then they'll present a list of product that suit your budget and your interest now imagine that experience you want to build online you can do that and you can do that uh, with engati so we, we built out of the box offering in e-commerce and a couple of other domains where people can just come in and start using the bot without training it as all of you know one of the significant challenges with ai is training and uh, training requires time and requires a lot of data and as you know data is there but creating a training data set and using it for building a chatbot is not easy but we kind of taken care of that so that has helped a lot of customers to come in and quickly use our platform and we are working daily with customers across the world and we are helping them trying to solve problems for their customers trying to service them better trying to have a superior enriched experience of their customers letting them know what is working what is not working giving them the analytics behind all the data that flows in and the best part is engati works across multiple channel we basically rely on messaging platforms like whatsapp facebook messenger instagram messenger teams slack telegram we have integration with around 14 odd messaging platforms through which you can connect your customers to businesses i'll just quickly uh, go over this uh, slide just to let you know what kind of customers work with us as i was telling earlier we have a lot of logos big logos across different industry verticals like e-commerce bfsi even government logistics and uh, some of the logos that you see are big brands and we have lot of customers who are also small to medium like take teach for india i'm not sure everybody knows about teach for india but they are like a non profit organization that wanted to kind of use uh, new age technology automation ai to help educate students especially the students who are don't have the privilege of going to a good school and when they talk to us and when they told us about their vision we thought of it and we realized that this platform can also help people who really are not having access to such technology and we worked with them and build a chatbot for them and they're using it to kind of help in scheduling uh, classes training programs and you know like during pandemic all of us were at home and all of us were trying to do our work and we all needed to talk to our coworkers and customers and vendors and all of that 
and we saw a big surge uh, uh, for chatbots during that time. Another interesting one is COVID ASA. Uh, during the pandemic, obviously, uh, all of us suddenly were locked in and access to information was kind of missing or we couldn't really get any information, right? Uh, yeah, we had access to the internet, but we can't talk to anybody. It's not easy to go and uh, talk to people in the market. So one of the challenges that India faced during that time is that there was a shortage of oxygen. So one organization came forth and asked us, can we build like a chatbot that works like a marketplace where people who have supply of oxygen can post information about the supply in which cities they have the supply and people who are trying to distribute oxygen cylinders, they actually can come in and chat with them and try to strike a deal with them and arrange for a delivery. And that was a big hit. And uh, we were really uh, kind of lucky to kind of work with them to help people in need. And we were basically uh, able to solve a big problem. I'll now spend a couple of minutes talking about generative AI. Personally, for me, uh, I interact or I work with AI tools on a daily basis. And uh, sometimes it is pretty interesting, right? Because AI is something that is unknown. Right? As some of you may know, most of the AI technology is using deep learning models and deep learning models are a black box. So for me, it's really interesting to play around with those models, try to learn how it works and try to see how we can make it work for solving tasks, talking to customers. And generative AI is one of the specialized sort of deep learning technologies which has really brought this whole AI revolution to an uh, in inflection point where it suddenly seems to be taking off. AI as such has been around for more than 30 to 40 years. And deep learning has been around for probably around 10 to 15 years. But why is it that suddenly uh, now everybody wants to talk to chat GPT? And you know, like chat GPT, got around a million users in a week. Now, anybody who is building products would want to do that, right? You would all want to get a million users in a week, right? And uh, imagine that you can serve a million users and they keep coming back. And that is what all of uh, businesses want, right? They want customers to come back. And ChatGPT currently has a monthly user uh, number of around 100 million. So can you imagine 100 million users using ChatGPT every month? And they have been doing it from the time it got released sometime late last year. So what has happened suddenly that this AI technology is now looking like it can solve a lot of problems. So what has happened is that the technology was already in place, but just that it is not easy to connect to the technology. So as all of you know, most of us have probably one or more than one mobile phone. So when the first iPhone got released, it was really an exciting era where Steve Jobs released iPhone to the world. And his goal was that everybody should have a phone in the hand or everybody should have a computer in the hand. Now, that was a breakthrough moment for technology and connecting people. But if you look at it, the software that runs within a mobile device, the operating system, which is iOS or Android, that is something that helped us to kind of quickly build mobile apps and offer it to people. Now, without the OS, we could not kind of proliferate mobile apps. Now, all of us have 
tons of mobile apps and we keep using them every day that wouldn't have been possible had we not had the technology powering those devices think of it the same way that the generative ai technology like chat gpt is kind of the operating system for ai right it's the power it's the software that drives all ai right and just like mobile apps could actually be built and hundreds and thousands of people start building mobile apps and not all of them had so much of technical knowledge right now this is the same moment for ai where the generative ai is like a operating system and anybody can build apps on it right literally anybody and i'll tell you why it is anybody you know like earlier also gpt3 and gpt2 all the generative models are available but who could access it it's only the developer the programmers who can write a program in python or java and can actually deploy the model in some server or call a api and use it now what about the rest of the world right the fact that 100 million people are using chat gpt means that conversation is the key right so you have to sorry uh, you have to connect with people in a human way and the only thing that changed between having a gpt model and having a gpt model with a chat interface is the only change that open ai made which led to 100 million people using it and as all of us know human beings learn through conversations we talk to people we talk to our peers we talk to our friends and we use whatsapp on a daily basis to get information to share information so conversation is very critical for understanding and connecting and kind of solving problems collectively so chat gpt enabled that by giving us a conversational interface and that was a very critical moment for us also because we had been using chatbots for conversations for years now and we knew about the promise of this technology but chat gpt just change that whole perception about chatbots and i feel that this is the moment like the iphone moment where suddenly you will see a lot of people start building apps which embed this generative technology behind it and why is that possible it is possible because chat gpt is just a api away right if you know how to uh, write a small program and now chat gpt generates those programs also you don't have to write it you can just ask it to write it can design a web page for you it can write a piece of code in python or java which can call a api chat gpt is just a api i way right so if you know how to call a api then you know how to build a, a generative ai app most importantly it is a subscription model it's a saas platform just like engart is a saas platform it's a saas product which means you can pay as you go so there's not much investment in using that technology and i think chat uh, open ai has really reduced the prices to a point that anybody in this world can start using the, the api and the fact that it is in the cloud means that it can scale right so if you look at it 100 million people using chat gpt now the free version of chat gpt has certain restriction i'm sure some of you would have gotten a message saying oh the load is too much and we have too many people chatting come back after some time but not with the api because the api is a paid api right and the best part is microsoft is actually running all those models right and microsoft kind of owns and takes care of scaling and reliability of that api so that is why i feel that building a generative ai app is just a api i way which means if you know how to use a api you can build a generative ai app and then uh, then you can solve problems yourself and you can solve problem for others uh, and i feel that in a few months time or in a few years uh, there will be a lot of applications which have 
the generative AI inside, just like Intel inside, right? There was a time where Intel used to say every computer has Intel inside. The CPU was Intel. Same way, you'll start seeing application which will have the generative AI inside. I'll now take you through few uh, good capabilities of ChatGPT. I'm sure all of you have heard about this. I'll just go over it. Maybe a repetition, but I think I'll relate to uh, why I picked up this six categories. So as I think I talked about earlier, human conversations to do business is a very critical part of commerce. And it's a very critical part, part of connecting customers to businesses, critical part of knowledge management, learning new things, right? And all of us learn by conversing. So chat GPT can converse in a very personalized way, depending on what questions you ask, it tries to understand where you're coming from. It tries to give a different answer to different guy, people, right? And that is the interesting part, right? It uses some amount of creativity. And that creativity is very critical, right? If you look at typical rule-based programming logic, you'll have a if then else saying, okay, if one, then print this message. If two, print a different message. Now, you can't have a million if then else. But ChatGPT is talking to 100 million users and giving them different answers, right? Just like when you search in Google, Google knows what is your search history and tries to give different answers to different people based on the search history. So chat GPT is able to do that. And that's a very powerful thing, right? It's as if you're talking to somebody who already knows you and it carries that context. So that is something that is very interesting to have more enriching, more engaging conversations with a chatbot. The next one is text generation, which is, I think, the primary training that ChatGPT got, which is how do I uh, generate text? And here there are many interesting use cases people are solving. Like there are a couple of companies who are now uh, have a way in which you can write a blog post. You can give a few sentences and you can kind of give it a hint and say, Okay, why don't you write a blog post about uh, cricket, right? Or how? Or why don't you write a blog post about AI itself? What can AI do? Or is AI a threat to humans, right? And it can generate a very good, interesting, engaging blog post. Or you can use it for creative writing, right? You want to write a story, and all of us want to write stories, right? Human beings learn from stories. But I don't think all of us, even though when we are kids, we could easily write stories, we could imagine things and write. Sometimes we find it difficult to put all our thoughts together and write it down, right? So here, chat GPT can help you write a story based on some guidelines or based on some information that you're giving, which can be what you're thinking. So based on your thought process, it can write for you. And I've also heard that people are now writing books. Chat GPT or GPT is like a co-author for a book. It can also rewrite a text. So if you want to send an email to somebody and you got an email and you want to just rephrase it and you can do that. Summarization. I think all of us want to learn quickly. We want to uh, get to learn a lot of things. There's information overload. We can't read so many articles. So can I quickly summarize what is interesting for me? And GPT can do that for you, right? It can Take an entire news article and para uh, give you a paragraph which summarizes the key concepts in it. Or it can take an entire book and it can summarize the key highlights of the book, point you to the interesting areas of the book. Not only text, it can also summarize software programs. It can also summarize semi-structured data, right? Think of a uh, JSON file or XML file for people who write programs and use JSON file. They have this huge JSON file, or they have a data model, which is like the relational database schema. And they're like 100 tables, right? Some of you would have experienced that. Oh, I have this 100 tables, and now I have to understand all these tables, right? Can somebody just tell me what these tables mean? Chat GPT can help you do that. Question answering. I think question answering is a very key concept for human learning. And imagine that you have this company which has hundreds of documents. They're all over the place, right? 
you have product documentation, you have policy document, you have training documents, you have so many presentations, right? And you want to give access to your employees or you want to give access to your customers or you want to give access to your vendors or suppliers, anybody, right? How can you give that access in a way that they don't have to download this document, go through it and get an answer to the question that they have? So with ChatGPT, we have to understand that ChatGPT has been trained on humongous data, right? It has been trained with all the data that is available in the internet, right? And no human can ever accumulate so much of knowledge. But we also know that ChatGPT hallucinates, right? It gives fake answers sometimes. Now for an enterprise, it is very critical to give correct answers or at least say, sorry, I don't have an answer. Now, chat GPT is very confident, right? All of you would have experienced that. Chat GPT sometimes very confidently gives you a very stupid and wrong answer. That is something that we have to prevent. And that is one of the key challenges for AI. How do you make people trust AI is by giving correct answer or saying, sorry, I don't know, right? It's okay to say, I don't know. That is an interesting use case that we are working on where we can use the language capabilities of chat GPT, the linguistic knowledge it has across different languages, but answer from documents within the enterprise. So if there's a customer asking about, hey, this product doesn't work, right? I did this, I did this. I wanted to, like, let's say there's a smart TV that I bought and I cannot connect it to the Wi-Fi, right? So can somebody help me? And I'm sure there are like a lot of questions around this and somebody has already given an answer. So can I get the answer in the bot? Can I get it in two minutes? I don't have time to read a document. Or can I connect to a customer support executive? Can I ask that question? And can he quickly give me an answer? All of that is possible now. Text categorization is a very old concept in NLP. It's about classifying text and sentiment analysis is a very key use case of that. Chat GPT does what others are doing, but it probably does it better because you can do it with little to no training, right? It understands human language. It understands words in the language which convey sentiment. And the last one, it's mostly uh, for the programming and developer community where Chat GPT can now generate code, right? So imagine, right, uh, you want to write 100 lines of code and you have one hour to do it. Now you can ask ChatGPT to help you, right? It's like a co-pilot. It helps you to program something, but please make sure that you don't take that code and put it into production. You have to review it, you have to test it, right? So it's an assistant, it's not gonna replace you. And we strongly believe that AI technology like this, is not going to replace humans, right? It is going to augment our intelligence. It is going to help us grow our knowledge. It's going to give us access to knowledge at our fingertips, democratize access to knowledge in the public domain, in the private domain, within the organization, give us access to that knowledge and grow our knowledge and help us in solving bigger problems by assimilating that knowledge across different areas. So that's what we believe in, and that's what we are working towards as to how do we use this technology? How do we help humans to do their jobs better or help them to kind of solve a new problem that they couldn't solve so far? So here are some of the use cases that we feel are very critical for enterprises to solve in the next six months to a year. Customer support has been using NLP AI for some time now. And this is a primary use case for Engati also. A lot of our customers use Engati and the chatbots, and we also have a live chat agent, right? So I'll show a demo of that. We have a way in which human agents can directly converse through our web app with their customers in chat mode. And uh, they can also transfer it back to the chatbot when they want to. And uh, that is one of the primary use cases 
but again as i talked about augmenting human knowledge we want to focus on getting access to information quickly and helping the agent or the human agent or the customer support executive uh, to answer customer queries quickly and to kind of give them the source of the information so that they can look it up if they want to and the same thing can be done by the bot also like let's take that there's a very low cognitive task like okay there's a document and i can connect to wi-fi can you tell me the steps to connect to a wi-fi do you think it is interesting for a human being to answer that query i'm sure nobody wants to do that over and over again throughout the day across days right so repetitive question that no human being will really be encouraged or inspired to answer let's give it to the technology right the technology doesn't complain it can answer that a million times and never get bored right so we can enable use cases on enterprise documents and kind of give access to knowledge and especially for customer support getting access to product documentation service manuals and training documents troubleshooting documents past history of tickets all of that can be exposed the next one is virtual assistant or i think people call it different names but let's call it virtual assistant so it's like the google assistant that you have or siri that you have it helps you perform tasks it helps you answer questions now think of a shopping assistant the job of the shopping assistant is to help users select the right product and buy it and it's like the store assistant in store assistant we talked about earlier so you can build a chatbot using chat gpt and you can imbibe in it the persona of a shopping assistant and it can give personalized suggestions and recommendations of product let's say another use case healthcare you want to book an appointment you call up a hospital they put you on hold right because the uh, agents are busy right and then you listen to some music right i think i'm sure all of you have encountered this but i can in today's era i don't think anyone wants to wait so why not have a virtual assistant for appointment booking for a hospital and we have certain customers who have implemented such use cases right so it can ask you about your details it can ask about which areas uh, or which doctors you want to consult it can look up the calendar it can ask you for your convenient time try to fit in the uh, do the scheduling and give you a appointment can be easily done or let's say you want to build a assistant to teach people right to teach students you can build a assistant which can read up everything that has been written in the history of uh, geography or geology and or computer science and can give you answers you can easily build that and this is the power of the technology it enables you to give access to information very quickly the next one is following what i told earlier knowledge management i'm sure everybody in today's world is looking to become a knowledge worker right everybody wants to learn more things right learn different things learn it quickly and get ahead of others right and uh, perform at our best how do we do that how do we constantly keep learning right so a big part of learning is can i get access to the knowledge let's say i have a knowledge base in a company it has tons of documents and design document uh, product documentation it has so many presentations about so many areas hr documents right uh, and if it's a company let's say like a travel company they have so much information about all the interesting places in the world right how do i get access to all of that how do i learn so this technology allows democratization of access to that that knowledge base and in a question answering mode right or in a search mode right all of us have heard about or oh, this chat gpt is going to kill google right google search will go away 
Now, don't believe to all of that. I think a lot of it is hype, and we need to clearly understand what is hype and what is reality. Chat GPT is going to help augment Google search. Uh, today, if you look at it, the search is like the same technology which was there built 20 years back. I'm sure Google has improved it a lot, but what if I want to build an enterprise search and I want to give the Google-like search to everybody in the enterprise? Can I do it? Very difficult earlier. Can I do it now? Very easy. And I can guarantee you it takes probably less than 50 to 100 lines of code to do that. And by the way, you can ask ChatGPT to write it for you. So that's the part of the technology. Now, the next one is Copilot. Uh, it's basically a buddy or a peer. So it can, ChatGPT can review what you're doing, can act as a peer reviewer for you. And GitHub Copilot is uh, one such tool where uh, it actually can assist you in programming or coding. Uh, so that is something which is pretty interesting, something like a co-pilot uh, in an aeroplane, right? Assist the pilot, reviews what the pilot is doing, it can be done now. Content creation, this is again a very powerful use case. Imagine all the marketing team, like I'm a marketing ex executive, I have been given a deadline that by tomorrow I need to create a campaign and send it to everybody about generative AI, I have to read about generative AI, I have to put together like a campaign with a lot of good uh, nuggets of information. I have to create some images. I have to make it very attractive. I have to send it for different customer segment, different messages, mind boggling, right? And I have this one, I have to do it. Now I will look for help. I want to do that, right? I don't want to give up on that. So can chat GPT help me? Of course it can, right? Chat GPT can help you to generate campaign messages. So I can just give it a few pointers and I can say, what is this campaign about? What's the theme? What is it that I want people to know? And uh, which customer segment I'm targeting? It can give you infinite number of variations of the campaign messages. And if I get that, as a human, I can quickly review it and I can pick what I want, right? Same augmented intelligence. We're not asking ChatGPT to take over the job. You're saying, hey, you give me the help, get access to all the knowledge that you have, tell me how to write this, add copy, become, become a copywriter for me. Create some fantastic, interesting, really new age sort of visual content, something that nobody has ever thought of, something that nobody has ever seen, that will quickly attract people. And you can use it for creating social media posts, you can create ads, you can also use it to create training materials. All of this is now possible using this technology. The last one is very interesting uh, and also very critical in the age of data that we live in. You know, like we have so much of data, data is all around us. I'm sure everybody has like a terabyte or two terabytes of pictures and documents and all of that, right? But then it's like, how do I get to know what I can do with the data? Very difficult. You need like a data analyst to answer that question. Now with this technology, chat GPT can become like a data analyst. I can say, hey, here are my sales orders over the last two weeks. Tell me what is going on. I don't seem to be getting any growth in sales. Can it do it? To some extent. Can we instruct it to do it the way I described? Of course it can be done. And that is very interesting for me because now suddenly we can put this tool, give it millions of data points. It can comb through all of the data. It can do all the number crunching. And based on the instruction, it can come back and say, hey, do you know, that you're not growing because you don't have traffic. You're not trying to attract people. Go and run an ad. Here is the ad, by the way. I'll suggest you an ad that you can run for the products in your store. Imagine the power of that. So that is now possible. I'll uh, now go over to a demo. I'll quickly demo what we have currently enabled already in Ngati. Uh, and I'll then quickly talk through 
for a different use cases that we are looking at uh, in the future. So uh, here is what we call the NGRT inbox. This is like your email inbox. Uh, it's an omni-channel inbox. You can have customers or users on the left-hand side. You can see the names of the users. These are all users who have been talking to the enterprise and with a human agent. And uh, you basically are looking at a conversation that has happened between a human agent and a user. So the uh, use case is that, let's say I have a travel company called Blue Sky Travel, and uh, I'm selling travel packages. And there's a customer who is interested to uh, travel to Europe, and especially now it's summer, right? Uh, people want to go to uh, Europe. So the customer comes in and says, okay, how can, uh, can you help me? And Henry, who is the customer support executive, let's say I'm Henry and I'm saying, yeah, sure, I can help you, right? What do you want to do? Where do you want to travel? And uh, then the customer is saying that, yeah, I'm planning a trip to Europe this summer. And Henry is in a human way saying, summer is a great time to go to Europe. And do you have any travel plan, right? So this is like a, a uh, guy who is trying to assist the customer to create a travel plan. And then they have this conversation, right? And at the end, uh, the customer is basically requesting for an itinerary, a plan with details of the cost, the places to visit, uh, visa requirements, and all of those things that you need to decide and finalize a travel plan. And uh, Henry is saying, yeah, I can get all of that to you and I'll probably send it to you in an hour or so. And with that, they end the conversation, right? Uh, and then let's say in the end, uh, Henry is saying, uh, thank you for talking to me. Is there anything else I can assist you? So Henry sends this message to the customer. This is uh, the customer's window. And uh, the customer now sees this message and says, nothing else right now. Looking forward to hear from you. So Henry now kind of looks at it and there's winds up the conversation and says, making a commitment, I'll send it within an hour. Now let's say this conversation has happened and like this, millions of conversations are happening on the NGRD platform with human agents every day. Now think of what Henry is going to do next. So Henry needs to summarize this conversation. All that has happened here, Henry needs to summarize it into a paragraph or so, and needs to go and update a ticket or capture this as a lead in a CRM system and kind of put the summary so that somebody gets the context. Or what if Henry now has to transfer this to some other agent? Let's say Henry now sees that, okay, this lead can convert and maybe wants to send it to the sales team, right? So Henry can transfer this uh, whole uh, conversation to another agent. And the other agent comes in, imagine when chat GPT was not there, oh, I need to now run through and read through this thousands and thousands of messages and understand what's going on. And I'm sure nobody will want to do that. And people are today struggling to do that. And people are like fed up doing that. So how does chat GPT help us? So let me now go and say, okay, I'm going to close this conversation. I'm done. Uh, let me generate a summary, right? Now, when we do this, what we do is we kind of uh, send out uh, information about uh, this uh, to a uh, chat GPT model. And we kind of ask it to take this entire summary and then kind of summarize it. And after this is summarized, it will be available for the 
agent and any other agent that come in the future and want to look at the summary right so if you look at it there are two conversations here there's another conversation about certs and all of that uh, but the good thing is you can have a chronological sequence of the summary and ESEN GPT is our trademark for uh, ESENS is a brand name for the AI technology that we've developed and now we have integrated that with GPT. So I can now get the summary and the best part is I can just copy it, right? And I can just paste it in any other app or I can just send an email to my supervisor saying, hey, I got a new lead, right? Uh, and we should uh, convert this guy. And then I can get on to working on the proposal that I have to send. Or if I transfer it to another agent, then all that is documented here, right? So uh, this is the way in which kind of you can enable uh, summarization of uh, conversation. There's another thing that I will also demo. Now let's say that uh, I want to kind of uh, explain a particular query. So what that means is that, uh, let me just start a conversation. So the uh, thing that I want to demo here is that if we have like a query and the user is basically asking something and the agent or the human agent is kind of trying to uh, understand uh, what is that query and trying to sort of answer that query. So uh, as you all know, like many of us kind of want to uh, ask a question to chat GPT and get an answer. Now here, I have already put that query and here's the answer that you get. So now in context of the same conversation that we did, uh, basically uh, the customer is asking a question saying, hey, can you provide uh, some good suggestions on adventure sports? And maybe because it's going to Europe or somewhere. And uh, in Alps, right, which is in Europe. And can you also give us some details of restrictions that may apply? Here, what we do is we real time send this query and ask Chat GPT to answer this query. Now, as all of us know, Chat GPT has infinite knowledge of a lot of things. Uh, it has a lot of general knowledge. And we're tapping into the general knowledge of Chat GPT. And if you see, interestingly, it has listed out some things like, oh, you can do snowboarding, you can do hiking, biking, skiing, and all of that. And then it is giving uh, guide, gu guidance to the agent, saying you should provide all of these details. And uh, you should also find out about age restriction, safety restriction. I'm sure uh, human beings know all of this, but sometimes it is very difficult to recollect that and put all of this in such a paragraph and send it in like 10 seconds, right? Now, here is where the power of the technology comes in. So, chat GPT can now answer this very quickly. Uh, at this point, we are taking the answer on chat GPT. Uh, we are also working on kind of validating it because sometimes the answer may be not exactly what you would want, but that's why we are having a human supervision. In the future, we are going to have it automated where we will do the validation. And we'll kind of uh, have the question directly answered by the bot. And only in the case where the bot cannot answer, uh, we'll hand it over to the human being. So that's all I had to cover. I'd like to thank all of you for your time and uh, attending this session and kind of learning about what all we can do, what are the possibilities with this technology. And we can now go to the questions. If anyone has any questions, you can type in your questions in the Q&A section or you can actually put it in the chat. Okay, so I see a question from Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for your question. So are there specific settings to get benefit from the GPT features 
on our engati account to use it when building our bots yeah it's a very good question and i'm guessing you already are an engati customer thank you for being an engati customer yes there are settings uh, right now we haven't opened it up for all customers uh, we are having a kind of a pre plan as of now where we'll allow beta customers to use this feature test it out and give us feedback and maybe by end of april we are going to open it up for all customers and uh, right now the requirement is that the customer has to have a open ai account uh, because we are going to use your account because the data that is being exchanged by us and chat gpt belongs to you so it should be in your account with open ai so that's about it you just have to create a api key and i can tell you that creating a uh, account in open ai is like a one minute job if you have a google or a email account you can just use that and create an account and it gives you a free credit of five dollars i think and that is enough for you to do tons of conversation and you can get started with that and if you like the features if you are able to get benefit from it go for a paid account i think it is very cheap uh, now they have slashed the prices now the second one is again pretty interesting and thank you uh, who asked this question is it uh, is currently this chat gpt feature powered for agent chat yes it is only available for agent chat as of now the reason being that we are testing it out with few customers we are getting the feedback we are trying to put in guardrails trying to improve the answers and we are going through this cycle that every ai product goes through uh, uh, most ai products and look at chat gpt itself right they released chat gpt uh, they took 3 4 months and now they release gpt4 and if some of you don't know gpt4 which is the next generation model from open ai got released a couple of days back and will probably come into chat gpt and you need that time to kind of make sure that the, you are giving appropriate answers you are putting safety measures in place and we are going through that so that's why we want agent to only access this now because agent has the knowledge to not give out an answer given by chat gpt if they think it is not appropriate or it is not informative they can use a judgment so that's why it is now only available for agent but as i was telling we are working towards making it available in the bot maybe in the next release we'll have it to do question answering in the bot and that will open up a lot of use cases that upload any document and we currently have a technology called docusense right docusense is based on cognitive search technology we built that four years back right and that time there was no chat gpt and uh, it does something similar you upload a document a pdf file or a xml file, sorry a web page or uh, you upload a web, website url and it can you can search and get answers uh, from that document but that is using what is called as a extractive summarizing technology what chat gpt does is abstractive which means it can read through all the document that you uploaded you have 10 documents on travel and tourism visiting bali right you have a question on bali you want to visit bali and you are saying okay what are the interesting things i can do in bali now what interesting things can be done in bali, bali is maybe in 20 different web pages right so how can i look at all those 20 web pages read through all of that within a second and give a very engaging answer now chat gpt can do that we are testing it now and we are seeing very good results on that so we will open it up in the next release where people can use it to get access to their website data any internal data that they have and uh, can use the true power of question answering where it will be a chat interface very similar to chat gpt where you can ask a question get an answer ask a follow up question contextually it will give you a contextual answer and keep doing it till you are satisfied So there's another question about integrating chat gpt with existing engati account from sri vidya thank you sri vidya yes so uh, as i explained uh, there are certain steps that you need to have a open ai account you need to have a api key for that 
and then uh, you can get in touch with customer support and they can actually turn it on for you, right? Uh, it's as simple as that. Okay, very good question from uh, somebody who wants to know, how can I increase my revenue of Shopify online store? Now, uh, right now the features that we have are primarily going to help in assisting uh, agents. So as a lot of Shopify stores have human agent assisting their uh, kind of uh, users, uh, maybe they're looking for product, maybe they're looking for what is selling most. So all of those can really be enabled and we are working on enabling sort of a way to analyze all of your store data, all of your traffic data, all of your conversation data, and give insights to the agents saying, yeah, if this is the customer, I know what the customer's purchase history is, recommend this product to the customer. So we are going to recommend those products. And we already have a recommendation feature as part of our Shopify offering. We're going to bring that in and integrate that with chat GPT, where we can give personalized recommendations. Interesting one from Achin. Uh, thank you, Achin. Yes, this is a very good use case that we are also working on. A lot of data is locked in databases, and we are trying to use ChatGPT to unlock all of that value in the databases, and we should be able to do that. Very soon, you'll see announcements around that. And uh, we don't have to train the models, right? That is the old way of doing it, the supervised learning. We'll use a technique called as uh, few sort learning, which means we can instruct chat GPT with few examples to be able to answer queries from databases. The next one is again from Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for your second, second question. Uh, can we connect GPT features to our bot and specify a database? Yes, yeah, things similar to what Achin does. Yes, of course, we can do that. We can connect chat GPT to any document. It can connect to any Excel file or a CSV file or a database. The only thing that we are very closely working on to ensure that we are not going to share any of your data, corporate data or your sales data to chat GPT. All of that will be in your store, in your uh, database. Just that we will use your question and try to come up with a way to answer a question from your database, right? Something like we'll create a SQL query, which will run on your database and give the data. The last one is from Ragib. Thank you, Ragib. What is required from the business to provide Engadi to make best use case for agent? Chat GPT provide general information. Right, this is a very critical point. Chat GPT definitely provides general information and that is the challenge. How can we use it for, for our specific data? That is something that, uh, as I explained a little bit earlier, we were working on, saying that we'll use a linguist features of chat GPT will use its knowledge of being able to understand concepts. So like let's say somebody is saying, hey, uh, it's a rainy day, I'm looking for something. Now, what do you think chat GPT will answer? It will try to give you answer, okay, why don't you buy an umbrella or a raincoat? It understands, it connects the rainy day to an umbrella. Right? You didn't have to tell it to chat GPT, it already knows. But now with that, can I look up for products in my store and suggest to the customers? That is something that we need to solve. Which means, can I run that on my data and give answers on my data and not use the general knowledge that ChatGPT has? We are doing that. We are working on enabling features where we can use the knowledge of ChatGPT to answer questions on your data by instructing it. So we are creating an instruction model where you can instruct ChatGPT to give you answers on your data. So I guess uh, those were some of the questions. I am going to look at the chat window. There are certain questions there also. So uh, question from Manish about uh, when the chat GPT feature API will be available. So uh, Manish, the feature is available already. It's in beta. So if you are interested in using it, you can contact Engati and uh, we can enable it for you. For customer service, this is a question from Porosec. For customer service and CRM analysis, how do we use it for closed data ecosystem? Yeah, something like 
HubSpot. Yes, very interesting. So uh, as I had explained a bit earlier, the true power of this technology is when I can use its knowledge understanding, language understanding, but make it answer questions or search on the data that I have and answer it on my data. And that is possible, right? I think recently HubSpot released a feature like that. So we are working on uh, creating fine-tuned models which can use the generic chat GPT model, but instruct it to answer questions from enterprise documents. It can be a CRM, it can be any other document that you have. It can be text, it can be XML, it can be JSON, it can be a database, right? It can be an Excel file or a CSV file. So all of those is possible and we are working on it. And the second part is how can we use it for marketing campaigns? Yeah, this is a use case that is very close to our heart. NGRT allows people to run marketing campaigns through our broadcast and campaign features. And we are working towards now suggesting to users. So let's say you are the same example of a marketing executive has to run this campaign and get a lot of leads, right? You want to know which campaign should I run? What message should I send? Which is working out, which is not working out? So maybe chat GPT gives you three options saying, hey, can you send this message? It's very good for younger people. Maybe this is good for the middle east guys, right? So you can send it out. And uh, then we collect the data and we actually come back and we'll tell you, hey, you know, this message resonated very well with the younger crowd, but this message didn't work so out uh, so much with the middle east guys. So we may have to change it. Now you can ask chat GPT, hey, this didn't work out too well. Can you give me a different message? I can give it to you. So that is something that we are working on. And that is something that you'll see shortly uh, in the build at uh, in the platform level. Next one from uh, Vikram about creating ads. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it can, you, you can actually tell chat GPT about the product. Uh, you don't have to give exact specs. You can give a very high level picture that, okay, there's a one bed apartment, I'm a real estate guy. I want to sell this apartment uh, and here are the little bit specs about the apartment, maybe the location, maybe facilities. And can you now create an ad copy uh, which can have a high sort of rank uh, in Google search? And uh, chat GPT can try and give you uh, that because it has seen so many ads, right? And uh, it can give you a, a generalized uh, sort of ad copy. Uh, obviously, you need to review it. You can't just directly take it and use it. But the fact that it can give you variation, one of the key things about chat GPT is chat GPT is creative. So if you have to tap into the creativity, there are parameters that you can tweak where one way is give me formal straight answer. One way is be very creative, give me outlandish answers. It can do that. And you can actually try it out. Uh, recording, yes, we'll send it to you. Uh, our marketing team is going to send out a recording. The next one is about uh, replying in voice. That's a very interesting uh, question. Right now it is text, uh, but as you know, like uh, voice is already supported in NGRT. At some point of time, we are going to enable uh, voice on these features. And uh, ChatGPT, uh, the OpenAI themselves have released a voice uh, product called Whisper. And uh, we're looking at it to see if we can use it. But uh, yes, that's a very good suggestion. And we will definitely look at uh, enabling voice support uh, in the future. So I guess I have uh, covered uh, most of the questions. There's one last one which I can take uh, about timelines for implementing. Uh, we are working hard to kind of try and get this done in the next couple of months. Uh, we will be making releases every month and you'll see every month we'll be announcing new features. Uh, we are working at the same pace as OpenAI is doing in releasing models every three, four months. Uh, but we have releases monthly and we'll try and cover new features every month. One uh, good one from Sairaj about responding to email. That's a very interesting point. Uh, Chat GPT can answer emails, can summarize emails, right? Just like you saw 
summarization of conversations, it definitely can summarize emails. And interestingly, yesterday I was seeing a video from Google and Google has now a way to take the entire email thread and summarize it, right? So yes, it is possible to do that. Uh, we haven't worked on it, uh, but you know, we also support email as a channel and uh, we'll certainly look at enabling uh, replying to email or summarize. And there is a lot of interest from users for such use cases. Now, one of the things that we do at Engati at a product level is that we listen to our customers. We listen to people who uh, are interested in our product. And uh, we try to get a sense of what everybody needs and prioritize that. So some of these features, uh, if they are critical to everyone, we'll obviously do it early. And if very few customers are asking for it, we'll do it, but at a later point in time. Uh, one last thing which I definitely want to address that plagiarism is definitely a very critical uh, issue in AI models. And uh, as I told, we are going to have certain guardrails and certain controls in place uh, where we will try to uh, get the content that ChatGPT is generating and we'll try to merge it with the content that you have so that it is personalized to your experience. See, the common words will be there, right? But will not really copy something. Now, ChatGPT at certain point of time will enable a feature where they will actually watermark any content that has been used for training. And we'll definitely look at that. So if there is a watermark on any answer that we get, we're not going to suggest that to anybody. Multiple languages, uh, again from Munir, uh, not yet, but in the works. We definitely want to support it in all the 50 languages that we have. As you know, we work with customers across the world and we support 50 languages in our current NLP pipeline, right? Which is not the chat GPT pipeline. We already support 50 languages and we look at uh, how we can support other languages in chat GPT. I think that's about it. Uh, I guess we're a little bit over time and I hope I have uh, tried to do a good job of uh, going through uh, everything that we wanted to discuss with uh, all of you. Thanks a lot, everyone. I think it is really nice to have someone, so many of you join and ask a very interesting question. And uh, I would like to thank all of you for joining this webinar and answering, uh, asking questions and helping me and understanding what you're looking for. And we'll definitely uh, kind of send out more details about this in a few days. And uh, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to send us an email or we'll get into a call and we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation also. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. And uh, I would like to thank the Engati's marketing team and obviously the technical team and everybody else in Engati who has been who have been working very hard to kind of make this possible. And uh, I look forward to having more such conversations with all of you in the future as we start releasing new features.